Here's the first thing against zones. This is a 2-3 zone. We'll show you different alignments. When I talk about positions on the floor, we want to have people in specific spots to create good spacing. So the wing spots, if I was to draw a line through the front of the rim, through the top of the block and the wing, we want you one step off that. And that would be your range, wouldn't it? Oh, throw him the ball. He just agreed that would be his range. Just make that shot. No, don't defend him. Oh, he said maybe. Okay. Come out here. We're always allowed to miss a shot. So we want you in that position. So on the other side, no, no, no. You're in that position as well. A line through the front of the rim, top of the block to the perimeter, one step outside the perimeter. Are you right? Are you on that alignment there? I think you should be down here. Yeah, front of the rim, top of the block, that's you right there. So now, what we're trying to help the players with, we want them to be able to attack two ways. Go to the baseline, go to the middle. The guys that are in the block, <coughs> we want you to have your baseline foot on the high side of the block, right there, and we want you to face the ball. So if the ball's there, you're facing here. So you'll have your right foot, on the high side of the block, and your, fa your left foot, I'm sorry, on that side, your other left foot, that's it. You'll face the ball. Wherever the ball is, you big guys will see that. Let's, let's assume that position. Yep, face the ball, you're right up on, high on the block. So now if he catches the ball, he can go to the baseline or he can go to the middle. Now that's our normal if we were playing man to man. Now. We make an adjustment against zones. For our baseline players, what we do now is we shift them down to the baseline, level with the backboard. So our first guiding principle is where they would be if it was man to man, if it's zone. Now, zone, you adjust to that alignment. Straight away, what's happened? What do you think's happened? What can you see there now? More space. Who's heard of the group called the Dixie Chicks? One. Who's it? Two. Haven't you heard of the group called the Dixie Chicks? A fantastic group, country group. They used to sing, call, uh, sing a song called Wide Open Spaces. So when you go to YouTube tonight, YouTube Dixie Chicks, Wide Open Spaces, was the number one worldwide bestseller. They came from Texas. So we want wide open spaces here. So simply by changing our offensive alignment, we now have created a bit of space here. And we'll talk about dribbling against the zone later on. So this is an even front zone, a 2-1-2 two, two, or a 2-3. Two people up the front, it's even. So we say against any even front zone, we want to have three out and two in. And the reason also we place the post players there is put the ball on the wing. Face the ball, stay low. Now they can see where these gaps are inside the zone in the middle here. For example, if uh, Nico went out to the ball uh, and you took that, what can you see now? Yeah. Well, he, like, it becomes obvious, doesn't it? So we're going to put our players in positions where they can see and react and be successful. So now he sees that. If Nico stayed in, you go out, the guard go out and take the ball. You shift across. What do you see now? Yeah, there's a big gap here. What else do you see? Yeah, you can flash into here. Hold up, you flash into here and yell out, ball. Just flash right in there and yell out. Right there, give a target, yell out, ball. ball. Defense, what are you going to do if you see that? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to attract two people, there's a shot there, quick ball reversal, now you can step into your range.
quick ball reversal, pass here, pass quickly here, there's a shot there. Okay? Bring the ball back out. So by simply getting in the correct alignment and correct spacing, we can create clear opportunities for spacing and cutting for our offensive players. So against an even front zone, we go three out, two in. Let's go to a one, two, two zone, fellas. Let's put you at the point. You're up here. You're in there. So now, this is an odd front zone where they have one player at the top, okay? Now we go what we call three deep. Who's got the best shooting range out of you two guys? Oh, well it's you, what's your name? David, David. pop down to the corner there, David. <clears throat> Pass the ball to David. Make the shot, David. Not bad. Come back again. David, stay down there. Clinic works hard. We often tease the kids, but they're good sports. And they work really hard. That was pretty good shot technique, David. I remember I, remember I missed a shot back in 1983, I think. Maybe. So, three deep here. Here's what we do straight away. You're still on your wing spot here. Straight away against a, a, an, an odd front zone, we have three on two on the baseline. Straight away, when the zones see this, you've got to shift across into the gap now, no, into here. Just walk across with the ball there. No, no, you're, you're here. You've got to come up now a bit. You get in line with the edge of the backboard here just about here, and you come across and get in line with the edge of the backboard. Now you guys can drift wherever there's a gap, okay? So we've got three deep along the baseline. You guys just now get opposite the edge of the, uh, the long elbow, I call it there, and long elbow there. So now we've got some gaps there. Straight away zone, you adjust. You adjust now, best shooter's there. Oh, so you're going to leave the best shooter open, zone defense. There, you've got a guy behind you. Not bad. What do you see now? Right there. Right here. And we have a rule when one big guy gets it, the other big guy goes to the bucket. So if I was you, I came here, passed me the ball, you go to the basket. Score. Very good. Okay, so against uh, an odd front zone, we go three deep, come back up to the top here, and we look at these guys to play in the gaps, in the gap here and in the gap there. So now, what we can do also is, well, when we dribble against the zone, we can shift these guys around a bit to play in the gap here. So simply by alignment, we can start to really pressure the zone defences. But if you can't make a 15-foot jump shot 50% of the time, what's the zone going to do? Sit in there and challenge you to take that shot. So we need to teach the kids to make that 15-foot jump shot against pressure 50% of the time. I think most of these guys can make that. Their shot technique's pretty good. Whoever's been coaching them has been doing a, a pretty good job with them. So alignment uh, is, is the critical thing for us. Let's go to a 2-3 zone, fellas. Good work. And see how our offensive guys automatically change their alignment? They've been well coached. Good job. So now we're in this. Some other general thoughts. Always opposite the ball, we want to have somebody diagonally opposite on the wing. So if the ball's here, just say you're forced to catch it a bit higher, <clears throat> you need to get into a gap where you can see him on the three-point line and give a target. Now if, if, if uh, Nico goes out to take that, just stand there and give a target. Who do you think's open now? Yeah, he could be open. You can just lob that over the top. Good. Cool. You, 
you wouldn't bounce past that, would you? No, you'd make that a big, strong pass, okay? So we can see that. If Nico stays in, well, we can skip past that. Now, Nico, what are you going to do? He's the best shooter. Throw it in. Dunk that. Power that in with one bounce along the baseline. And Can you dunk yet? We need to learn how to dunk. See, boom, you can dunk that. Okay, bring it out. Good. So we have somebody to stretch the zone wide opposite the ball so the wing players can drift around a bit. Good target hands. We're trying to create spaces against the zone uh, so we can dribble against it. <clears throat> we can skip past the ball against the zone a couple of ways. We can throw it directly across. Just skip pass, big pass. Good. Or bring the pass back. Just post up inside in front of him here. We can throw it to the post. No, no, from the wing. Z adjust zone, adjust, skip it. We can throw it across quickly. Or we can just simply hold it there. We can put it through hands. You catch the ball quickly, skip it straight, or bang, and we've created a shot for you or a drive straight off. There's a line down the middle of the floor called the split line. It splits the line of the court in two. On one side of the line is the ball side, that's the side the ball's on. The other side is the help side. And if we're playing man to man, we'd only help from the help side. We never want the ball to go back to this side without it first going over the split line. So if I was you and I was just simply making this pass and it came back to here, look and then make that pass again. The zone can handle that pretty well. But if I dribbled over here and made that pass and now make that pass, we've set up a shot opportunity and the zone has that more difficult uh, job. So we need, or we can skip past it. It's over the split line. If you adjust, you can skip it straight back. And we've created a little shot opportunity or a dribble penetration opportunity on that skip back from there. So we need to think of those other general thoughts uh, against the zone. Um, what's your first name again? David. If David's your best shooter, by consensus he's the group's best shooter, we take the ball away from him first. So we'd have the ball over here in a good stance. You're right. You just, you're within your range there. So we take the ball away from him first to get the zone moving, to set the zone up. And then we'd get it back to him either late in the shot clock or after we explore some other little options. Because if, if our team knows David's the best shooter, the opposition will know as well. So we take it away from your best shooter first and then we get it back to him. The thing about placing the zone, uh, post behind the zone, I just want to talk a little bit more about that. If the ball's on the wing here, and just react as you normally would zone. Okay, good. You can see some gaps. You can, you can step into here, but before you'd step into there, you might just step into Nico here and post him up and just stand there. So now you might see that or you may not see that. You just step here and give a strong target. Just step in a bit to your range, unless that's your range. So we've committed this, we've committed that. So now, where are your targets? David. Yeah, David or, yeah, what's his name? Ben. Ben, okay, good, Ben might see that. But if Ben came high, okay, what would you do now? Go there. Where's your gap now? In there. Throw it in to, to what's your name? Max. 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 Throw it into Max. Now, when one big guy gets it, we want the other big guy to go to the basket and get free. So where are you going to cut? Get free. You might have, right there. Now, straight away, Max, where are your targets? 
there and there, good. So when one post player gets the ball, the other post player is going to get to the basket and get free. That last bit's important, get free. So then he might be a decoy. If you yell out for the ball, oh, did you hear that? Yell out for the ball, ball. Would you pass anybody that? Huh? Would you give somebody, I go, what? Ball! There you go. So straight away, Nico might go, uh-oh. And now, Max has got David on the wing there. Open, ready to go. Okay, bring it back. So let's do this. Ball's in the middle of the floor. That's our private jet coming in, ready to take us for a sightseeing tour later on this afternoon. So that'll be good for us. Let's do this. Max, is it? You flash high to the elbow, Max. And just give a target out with your left hand. Throw the ball to Max. Catch and face. The first jet was Gordy's. That's mine. I don't know whether Damien will have one coming or not. But if you catch and face, you go to the basket and get free. Good. So we can throw it there or there, or if he goes there, you can just step right in here. We're gonna pass there. So that phrase I use for the bigs, catch and face, is gonna be a very important phrase. Catch, face, we see all sorts of stuff uh, that opens up from this. So, as we're preparing our post players to play, there used to be a dotted circle on the floor there, but there isn't now. You can also step out into what we call the short corner. There, hit the ball to the wing, hit him, Good. So get to the basket and get free now. You have to teach your big guys to seek contact. If he's there, back into him. No, 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 no. Into Nico. Back right into Nico. So you hold him there. You hold him right under that bucket there. See, if you're out from underneath and you don't seek contact, Nico comes to you and gives you a little bump, and now you're way out of here. But if you cut, go back where you were, Nico. If you cut inside and see him underneath there, you go and seek contact, post him up right there. Now he's committed to you, okay? So we want him to seek contact. One big guy gets it, the other big guy goes to the basket, gets free, seek contact, post people up inside. So all the time we've got, we got good, good stance inside, then we've opened up stuff from the perimeters. Okay, take a seat, fellas, not bad. <coughs> The next thing I'm going to talk about is um, thanks, good. The next thing I'm going to talk about is dribbling against the zone. And many years ago, we used to teach not to dribble against the zone. We just pass, rely on a bit of player movement, quick player movement. We might overload. We might send a, a post player to the top, have one there here. We'd go four on three against the zone on, on one sort of a side. But nowadays, dribbling against the zone is highly effective. And there are three ways of dribbling against the zone. But what do you think sets up dribbling against the zone? What's the first thing we spoke about when we talked about zone here? Starts with an S. Second letter's P. The Dixie Chicks sang about it. Wide open spaces. So spacing. We have to get our alignment right against the zone. We have to get our spacing set against the zone before we even start to think about how can we dribble against it. Because as you all identified, once we moved our posts down to the baseline 
and got in the correct alignment, what did it do? What did the zone have to do? It had to open up and provide some spaces. And now we can talk about how do we dribble against, uh, against those sorts of spaces. And there's three primary ways. Fellas, let's get um, three guys up, a point, a wing, and a wing, and two defenders up as if you were at the top of the zone. Let's go, uh, let's go uh, uh, light on offense and dark on defense. So both Gordy and Damien have mentioned in their clinics about breakdown drills. So when we talk about showing you the whole method, I've shown you some five on five stuff to illustrate post play, to illustrate uh, spacing, to illustrate alignments, and to illustrate ball reversal. So we've shown you that five on five. So that's, that's what we call whole. That's all of it, five on five. So now we're gonna break this down a little bit and talk about the top of a zone if it, and well, the most common sort of a zone is a 2-3 or a 3-2. We'll work these dribbling principles against, as if it was a 2-3 zone, where we have an even front zone uh, at the top here. So you guys would just be up a little bit further. Yeah, just up. Yeah. So now there's three ways we can dribble against a zone. And the first way is a gap dribble. And again, the reason why we talk about teaching this specifically and prescriptively, meaning we want to have some very strong detail, is so we can help the players with their decision making. And Damien will touch on this, he already has about making decisions in his sessions to come. He's already touched on it a little bit. So if we want to set up Will, if we want to set up Will, for a shot, I can dribble straight into this gap here, hopefully draw two players, and then hit Will for a shot. He's down in a stance, hands ready to catch, and then drive that three-point shot. Okay, so let's do that first. Come out a bit. Okay, let's dribble in. See, Will, Will looked as if to say, well, that's normal. There's no need to applaud. I just do that every time. Is that right, Will? Will said, all the time, no problem. I coached a team once, and we were so bad at shooting, if we hit the rim, we were given high fives. So you'd, you'd be a star in our team. Very good. Righto, Will, let's do that again. Same thing. Gap dribble. Oh. Will went. Whew. Yeah, that's normal. Good. Good job, Will. Good shooting. And we would expect you to be loaded up, knees bent, hands ready, catch the ball and fire. You have to be a more convincing dribbler. Because sometimes we coach against the defense as if they don't know what's going on. Do you think when we gap dribble, he's going to know that we're, we're going to be trying to set that up? So when you gap dribble, you've got to go hard, right in here as if you're going to penetrate hard. And your objective is to aim to get two feet inside the key. So now, what's your name? George, George has committed. Bang, you've hit Will, and there's the shot. We'll, we'll talk about the other types of dribble. And then we'll show you a little continuity drill that we can do with this that will involve you guys setting each other up. Let's do that now. Go hard. Good. Not bad. Foul. Good. Here he is. Bring it out. Quick. Now this time, hit Will. Pass to Will. Will, you're now going to dribble two ways. You can dribble into there or you can dribble straight into the elbow here trying to draw what's your name? Axel. Axel. You're trying to draw Axel and now you're loaded and you're going to hit him with a left hand pass 
and he takes the shot. So we're dribbling against the zone. You've got two ways to go, but there's no defense there now, so we won't do that. So you'll, you'll try and get into that elbow once George comes out. You'll, you'll get in here, and you'll keep going until Axel's committed. Bang, hit him for the shot. Okay, let's start at the top. Hit him first. Nail it. Good. Ball out. Go again. Good, not bad. Now this time, when you catch the ball, you pass out here to Will. You dribble, penetrate, hit the top. You're now gonna dribble, just in here, one dribble, and then get it on. Yep, nail it. It's all right, it's okay. That, the good thing is that hits something. You've got to take encouragement from that. So what we're going to do now is play this drill a little bit live. We're, we're going to get you guys to dribble, penetrate, kick, kick, and set up a pass. But you might do it, don't take a shot until you hear me say shot. Now it might be for you, or it might be the next pass. Got it? So we're going to, this is called gap dribble. Go. Hard. Good. Hard. Stop. Uh, what, what, stop. What dribble was that? Was that a gap dribble? No, gap dribble. Because we want him to be absolutely clear. And if someone's on him, bang, he's going to kick it over here to Will. So where are you going to gap dribble? Yeah, pass the ball to him. So Axel's come out to you. Just give a little fake to the baseline. Shift him a little bit. Good. Now you're going to pound straight into here. Keep going. Good. Now it's there or it's across there. Okay, got it? What's your first name? Kim. Kim. Okay, right, Kim, let's do that. Go. Penetrate. Good. Nail it. Shot. Not bad. Good. Okay, let's go. Now you guys just keep dribble, penetrating, and passing until I call out shot, go. Hard, hard. Shot. Not bad, where was the better shot? Yeah, we'll get. No, either you or the next shot, whatever, okay. See, that's very good. I said, uh, why did you take that shot? He wasn't sure of my coaching instruction. He said, I thought you said this. We were able to clarify that. So now the teaching opportunity is much better. And you want to encourage your players to do that. He wasn't sure, so he asked. That takes a lot of courage to do that. So nice job. Let's go. Oh. Keep going. Shot! Good. Nice job. See, that's a good shot. We call that a shot opportunity. And I think it's important for you to learn that it, it's not a good shot, because some shots will go in and some shots won't. That was a great shot opportunity. We'd set up the wing player perfectly. Bang. There he was, straight open. Easy. Get into the rhythm of a shot, take it. So we want to create good shot opportunities against the zone. One more time. Let's go. Recover, keep going, keep going, pick it up, bring it in, go, go, play. Shot. Good, good shot opportunity, not bad. It's all right, you'll work on your range, that's okay. Ball out. Good. So gap dribble. And eventually, if we had another player down on the baseline, we would have Will dribbling into here and trying to draw two, and then you'd simply jump stop and get it out to the top and get it across as we do that. Okay. The next sort of dribble we have against the zone is called a freeze dribble. 
So if I want to dead set, uh, I've got to stop using Australian slang, if I want to really set up Will for a shot here, I'm going to dribble straight at George and get him to commit. Now, this is an interesting little dribble technique that we use. George knows that I'm going to try and freeze him. So if I dribble with my right hand, George will hedge to his uh, uh, right and with his left hand up. But if I dribble at George with my left hand, so I'm here and we've got to be careful where Alex is here. But if I dribble here at him, now more than likely he'll want to come across and play the ball. So now I move it to the other hand and make that push pass to the wing. But you have to read that. But if you have a very good defender here, they'll know uh, he's going to try and freeze me. So I'm going to fake here and go here. But if you go on your inside hand, you've got to read what Alex is doing. He'll commit to the ball, bang, we've set up. So we call that a freeze dribble where we dribble straight at the player. So now, if you're going to freeze dribble Will, who are you going to dribble at? Yeah, George or the guy there. So if you dribble straight at George, you can either go with your right hand or left hand. You'll come straight at him, and now you'll kick the ball here. And now, if you want to freeze Alex, you'll dribble straight at him. And who have we set up for a shot? Kim. Okay? So the difference between a gap dribble and a freeze dribble. Freeze dribble, we go at the player, get them to commit fully to the ball, then kick it. Go. No, we're going to go uh, a freeze dribbles. No, no, that's a Yeah. Freeze dribble. We dribble at the player. What's your first name again? Adam. Adam. Yeah. Oh, good. Go. He knows, so I don't have to tell him. And it's on tape, and it'll go around the world, so you're okay. Here we go. Freeze him, freeze him. Good, shoot it. There you go. See now, progress, Kim. First one hit the backboard. This one hit the rim. There's massive optimism for the next one. Go again, fellas. No, no, no. Freeze. We're in a freeze dribble. Your choice, whoever. Shot. Here we go, Kim. Oh, not bad. Let's go, quick. Bring it out. Let's go again, freeze dribble. Good. You're right, you're right, that's okay. Shot! No, no, that's gets, gets getting there, we'll get there. Okay, not too bad. Now, what we had um, Adam do a minute ago was, instead of dribbling, he just got the ball on. So, what he's done now, he's combined ball reversal with dribble penetration. He saw there was no need to try and dribble penetrate because the defense was already, so he just kicked the ball straight out to Will. So that's good thinking, good decision making. So now we have the third sort of uh, dribble. And, and this is an entry dribble. So you'll dribble at Will, and Will, you'll, what we call a high shallow cut. You'll cut behind the defense here at the top line, and then you'll come back up the top to here. So you'll dribble to here, and then you'll occupy this position, and now we either reverse the ball, or we gap, or freeze dribble. We want to set up Kim for the best three-point shot of his life. Okay, so come back out. So this is called entry dribble. This is called dribble entry. We go from the point to the wing. Now hold up. Now automatically see what the defense has done a little bit. We've nearly forced the top of the zone to play man-to-man. -to -man. 
Okay, go again. And when you come up there, will you shape up as if you're going to catch it and shoot it? Go. Entry, hard, hard, good. Reverse it, all right, good. Not bad, not bad, good. It's a good shot opportunity, good. Go again. Go the other way. Shallow cut, Kim. Shallow cut, Kim. Stay here, Will. Get it on. Good. Nail it. Not bad. Good. Good shot opportunity. That's fine. That's okay. Go again. Now this time we'll have dribble entry from the wing. Okay, so the ball's here. You dribble at Adam. You shallow cut to where the balls come from. The ball was here. Good. Okay. Now, if we're going to dribble entry and we dribble from the point to the wing, we're normally going to set up a shot on the other side. If we go wing to point, we'll normally set up a shot on the same side. Just to, and it'll change, but just a rough principle. Let's go dribble entry, point wing. Point wing, dribble entry. Go Kim's side, Adam. Whoops, start again. Ball back to Adam. Go Kim's side. Point, point to wing. Yeah, point to wing, sorry, yeah. Kick it, kick it. Good. Ooh. Now, Will, why the bounce? Why, why the bounce? You say to me, habit. You say habit. No, you say habit. Good. So we need to break that habit. Let's go. Whatever you want. Good. Much better shot, Will. Good. Whatever you want, Adam, you choose. You can either go gap, freeze, or entry. And all you, can, all you might want to pass to, uh, um, to Will or Kim, and they can dribble entry or gap, freeze, whatever you want to do. Good, not bad, okay. Fellas, if you see, if you see somebody open now, you just give them the ball, pass them the ball. Now defense, you play tough now. Yep. Yes, you can skip pass if you want, yeah, as well. See, what we're doing now is we've gone from simple to complex now. And Will has already joined in with skip passes. We now go gap dribble, freeze dribble, entry dribble. And now we let the players start to decide and make a read. Do we need to, do we need to gap or freeze or entry, or can we just make the pass to somebody who's open? So we have to keep this really simple. Okay, away we go. Good. Nelly, good work. Go, whatever you want. Here we go. Good, come on, keep going. Now notice how I've stopped coaching which is sometimes you need to do that because I want to check and see how much they know. So if I keep coaching them every step of the way like gap or freeze or I won't, I won't have an idea of what their understanding's about. So often we need to be quiet and let, let's see what their actions tell us, what they've learned, what they've understood, how they sequence, what their decision making's like. Otherwise they're going to be listening for me all the time, and we don't want them to be dependent upon me. Good, not too bad. Keep going. Hold.
Hold up. Stop. What was that dribble? No, no. Was that a gap or a freeze? Freeze? You sure? See, we want to avoid this sort of a dribble. It's called a frap dribble. That's a cross between a freeze and a gap where the, the players will just dribble in and, and hope that... But we want to make... And it, it wasn't too bad. I thought it was, it was nearly a bit of a gap dribble towards the end. And sometimes what will happen is your dribble may change. For example, if Adam's going to dribble at George, he comes here and suddenly George anticipates, so it's freeze, he may just cross over and come in here. Now it's a gap dribble. He's right here. Pass, pass, shot, or the bigs. So sometimes on dribble penetration, when you're getting into advanced play, the status of your dribble will change depending upon what the defense gives you. So you need to be able to coach that as the kid's skill level becomes a bit better. Okay, one last time. Good. Let's go, quick, quick, quick. Fellas, you're playing a four-man drill at this stage. What we've done is we've taken, this is a bit of a breakdown drill, we've taken the big guy out of the middle of the zone. So we want to check your posting technique. So here's how we drill, come down onto the, onto the, three out, two in, fellas. Get your spacing right. Okay, pass the ball to the wing. You simply step, adjust. Now, Nico, what we want you to do is step in and post up uh, Alex, is it? Max, I'm sorry, close, Max. Okay, we want you to post up, and Max, you defend him hard. Okay, so if you can't get that in, you skip pass. Nico, why are you moving out? Yeah, 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 yeah. but I'm the referee now, so I'll be very lenient on this. So you, you post him up now, you keep him behind you. So then if he goes out, throw it in. Oh, yeah, throw it in so he can catch it. Right out, and then you score. Good, all right, that's the drill. Got it? So here's what we're working on. We're working on our post guys being able to post up. If he doesn't get it, what we call reseal on the skip and post up again. Okay, go. Come on, Nico, good. Can't get it? Oh, hold up. See, you've got to stop him from getting out there. You've got to seal him, yeah. Like Nico. Big. Yell that out, Nico. You, you make your choice. Nico, what are you going to yell out? Big. 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 Here we go. Good, nice job. A little bit of a shuffle of the feet, but not too bad. Good. See, we need to teach our players how to play in space. The big guys who play better understand the markings on the floor and where they are in relation to the bucket. Damien uh, and Gordy spoke about angles when they were coaching. And this, the, the big guys know on the floor, if they st I stand here, which is the best angle for me to take a jump hook or a hook shot as Gord was going through or a jump shot? They know by where they are on the floor because they've learnt that where the floor markings are will determine where the backboard is. So that time you maybe were just a little bit low, but it wasn't too bad because you were getting bumped. Let's go again. Play, play. Not bad, okay, not too bad. Let's do this now. Let's get another post player in. Down here. Now this time we want Will or Nico to flash high. Just step off the, uh, the high elbow here, make a pass. 
you get to the basket, Nico, and post up, and you hit him and score. Good. Righto, that's the drill. Now, vice versa. Nico, sometimes you might flash. Will, sometimes you may, if he flashes, you go. Or, if you can't, this is another bit of post play, if you can't get the ball to him, you hit the wing. If you can't get it to Will, Will, you exit baseline side and you bust to the basket, Nico. Down here, seek contact and score. Okay, let's do that. So now we're going two on two on the baseline of the zone. We've taken the big guy out. Okay, away we go. Exit. No, 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 no. Ball back here. Watch this. Post up again, Will. We're going to teach our players to go and seek contact, which means get to the opposition player. The basket is prime here. You exit. Your next move is to get right in front here. Right there. When you come down here. That's where the pot of gold is. That's where you need to score, so we don't you cutting out here. You bust down and post up. Now, if you do that, come down, post up, and you can't get it because you're over the top. Now we've opened up all sorts of other opportunities. Okay, got it? Let's go. Keep playing. Okay, ball out. Quick, quick, quick. Go. Go! Good. Not bad. Good job. Nice job. Go again. Quick. Quick, quick, quick. Hit the wing. Hit the wing, Kim. Left, left, left wing. Left wing. Stop. Go to the basket. Get free. See, by you... No, to the basket. Go to the basket. Get free. Now, by you doing that, look what's open here. Okay? Sometimes, fellas, we play here to create a shot opportunity there. We, we are so big inside, they're going to commit to us, and then we throw the ball out here. Okay, let's go. Good. Stop. Will, what are you doing? Good. Will was doing this. It's not a bad skip pass. It's pretty good. Not bad. Where Will should be saying, ah, this is a skip pass. I'm seeking contact, and look, he's got the shot. This is a point that uh, Gordy and Damien and I were discussing last night. Continuous play. We've got to have drills where the players play and drill continuously, not stop. For example, often when a shot goes up here, and this is not good for this clinic, the shot goes up and everything stops. That's not what it would be in a game. If I was at practice here, we would do this. If the shot missed, we would have a couple of coaches out either side. There'd be an outlet pass, and we'd be begin our offensive and defensive transition to halfway. Then we'd come back, we'd set the drill up again, and we'd go again. So we're, we're practicing the game as it would be in its stages. Practicing second, third, and fourth uh, particular efforts as we play. But for clinic purposes, we're not doing that right now. Let's go. Throw it in, throw it in, throw it in. Good. Now, if the defense is on your right-hand side, where would you throw it? On the left-hand side. That's right. Yeah, okay. Righto, now, test your memories. You guys keep posting up. You guys dribble entries. Go. Shot. Five, four, three, good, not bad. Go again. So we're trying to join things a bit together now. Hold up. Let's get another dark defender inside. Big. Righto, fellas. 
post play and dribble entries, ball reversal, whatever you want to do against this 2-3 zone. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. Very good, good. Kim, nice shot, good job. Let's go, quick. White ball, get ready, black. We're gonna put you on offense in a sec, go. Stop, stop. Was that a really convincing gap dribble? No, no, go in there as it, see, if you get to here, if you get to here, and they're off and they're off, you take that. Okay? You just catch that to shoot. Here we go. Stop. Now, I don't know whether these two guys have got infectious diseases that prohibits them from having the ball or not. What do you think? They look healthy to you? They look okay? He reckons they do? Good. So if he's open, just stick it in there. Okay? Get the ball inside to the bigs. Let's go. Hold up. Now, what are you seeing? Yep. See, I've just asked Kim what he's seen. And he's told me where all his players are. He's taught about options. But what's there? Yeah, free lane. Free lane. So we're going to teach our players to have focus here and focus there. Now, if you get into here, what now opens up for us? See, three guys around you, yeah. So that's a better option, isn't it? Good, see, so as you want it. So what we're gonna do is now, what I'm trying to do is let the kids play a bit, point out some options, but teach them which one to use now. When is it time to reverse the ball? When is it time to gap dribble? When is it time to freeze? When do we give it to the bigs? So, and that's the beauty of playing, because they're gonna have to make those decisions. Keep going. Good, good, keep playing. See, um, fellas, let's play now as if this is an actual game. Like we're now playing a game and we're gonna play on. If there's a fumble or whatever it is, it's always white ball for the moment. We're just gonna play, go. Oh, yes. Play on, good, not bad. Okay, white on defense, black on offense. Here we go. Stop. What sort of dribble was that? Yeah, it was one of these frap dribbles. It wasn't a, it wasn't a gap or a freeze. Yeah. Go at someone or get it into the gap. Right, and when we say gap dribble, when you gap dribble, it's, the aim is to get two feet inside the key. Right inside the key and draw them. Good thought though, here we go. Hold up, where's your spacing now? Yeah, see that's much better for you, isn't it? Why is it better for you now? Yeah, but also, what else do you think? Get a shot. Do you like shooting? Here we go. Ten, nine, not bad. Come on, let's go, it's a good shot opportunity. We know David can hit those. Here we go. Black ball, go. Hold up. How many defenders were around you when you took the shot then? Two, maybe three. So were defenders on other people? Yeah, that wasn't a bad shot, because you were up, it was a good shot. But there could have been others that were more open. Okay, here we go. Good, good stuff. Good. Nice. 
Good, excellent. Good stuff. See, these are all good shots. These are all good shots. We want to encourage our players to take shots against zones if they're open like that. We'll miss a couple, but we make 50%. We're brilliant. Here we go. Good, there we go. Keep playing, keep playing. Good, excellent. Here we go. Now, offensive players. How many times have the post players touched the ball? Zero. So what do you think of that post players? What do you think? Not good. Not good? What do you think? I think he said disgraceful. <laughs> he agreed with me. See, the big guys club will start striking, as Gord was saying, if they don't touch the ball. So we need to have some inside and outside play. So now you guys, you can flash high, but now you can also we call this little area here the short corner. It's, a, it's an area around here. So you can pop out and receive the ball here, ball to the wing, come out to here, catch, face, get free, get in front of someone, good. Now look over the other side, skip it, boom. Okay, let's do that for a second before we're going to move on, quickly. Look over. Stop! Yeah, skip that. See, what I'm trying to do now is now I'm intervening a little more at the end to sort out opportunities that the players may not see because sometimes players just focus one pass away. Well, often we need to see what's two passes or a skip pass away. So have a look what's here, but always check what's on the other side. Here we go. Play on, play on. Very good. Very good. Very, very good. The zone now becomes what's common these days, a bit of a match-up zone. So as I mentioned before with man-to-man -man defenses, as the level of the defense picks up and becomes better, we have to add a little bit more into our offense. Because after a while, the better zones will be able to handle ball reversal, dribble penetration, a bit of high-low post action. Just enough to cause us to take shots late in the shot clock that might not be as good uh, as we could get otherwise. So now we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about screening the zone. And I'll teach this in... Um, uh, in, in five on five, and then we'll combine some dribble entries and a whole lot of screening against the zone as well as some other principles that we've, we've talked about so we can uh, bring it all together and you can have a bit of a look. Let's get uh, five on five, lights and darks and a ball. Uh, let's get a two, three zone. So here's another little job for our post players. Now let's check our alignment out first, post players. What do you think, coaches? Coach them, coaches. Where should the baseline players be? Yeah, level with the backboard, level with the backboard, to start with, good. What are our wing players like? What's your first name? Aria. Aria? Yeah. 
Aria. Aria? Yeah. Aria, you're pretty well spot on. You've played here before, just today. Good job. David, you okay there? Yeah. That's your range? Yeah. David's confident. Yeah. Name again? Brian. Brian, yeah. you right? Okay, zone. Righto. When we now look at all these different things that we've got against the zone, we now look at screening because the defense is pretty good. Let's have Aria pass him the ball. Adjust zone. Just stay there on the post. Give a big target. Good? Not bad. Now, you just step in here a little bit, Brian. Give a strong, so you might have to play that. The first thing we do, you've got to face the ball now. You'd probably shift across a little bit, Will. We're going to screen the baseline player in the zone. There's two reasons for doing this. We can create opportunities for the wing, but we can create opportunities inside. And here's how it looks. You step in and screen Will. Now, you hold that. You now skip pass across to Brian. Now Brian will have a, an absolute shot. But if this happens, if you get out from that, no, 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 Will. You fly out there, you step in now and screen, and now post up. And now just go straight up with your left hand and score. Good. So we've created a perimeter shot, and we've got to teach this double screen action where you screen Will, then you screen Will. Oh, we've got the Will brothers, we've got Will squared. So you screen Will 1, and then you screen Will 2. That double, and then you turn around and... Let's, let's, let's set it up. Ball with David. Now, walk us through. He goes there. You come straight in and screen here. Then post up. Now look at that. Got it? And really, what a good question. What a very good question. Nice job. Here we go. Let's hit Aria. Screen in. Screen in. No, no. Hold on. Why did we stop? You forgot. Fair enough. Let's go. Here we go. Ready. I reckon, I reckon the little left hand would have been much better for you without the dribble. Okay, let's go again. Go again. Just do exactly the same thing again. Quick. Come on. Stop, stop, stop. Now, continuous play. So, what are you doing now? Depending on it. Yeah, and where's the ball? Okay. And what are you doing now? He's having a look and thinking, that's not pretty bad play over there. You can now come in and screen Nico. Well, well, I'm not sure whether... Let's do this, stay screened. We'll string some principles together, watch this. Ball to the point, gap dribble. Post up, hit the wing, throw it in, score. Maybe. So, what we're gonna teach our guys on the baseline to do is keep screening. Okay, let's go again, quick. Look. Not bad. Bit of leather for lunch. Didn't hurt anybody. Bring it out. Here we go.
Yeah, now, it's not compulsory to shoot every time. There might be some other people open. Well, I've got to move on quickly because we're running out of time here. So, we can screen either the, the baseline man or the other guy. We can also do this. We can dribble entry, reverse the ball, and set a shot up for the point. Let's do this. David, isn't it? Brian, why do I keep forgetting your name? That's David, yeah. Brian, dribble entry at Aria. Shallow cut. Rever give ball to the point. Reverse the ball. Now, screen Nico. Brian, screen here. Your shot, right there. Now, as soon as that pass is made, and he's made contact, you're up here on defensive balance. Skip it. Hold up. Yep. Go where you were going to go. You, you, you came out. At, screen him. Post up. Good. Now we play. Look what's here. Like if I'm you. Pass it to him. Gap it. Hold up. What are you doing, Will? Skip it. Shot. Okay. Good. Here we go. Let's do that. Dribble entry, screen the top and the bottom of the zone. Dribble entry, ball reversal, screen. Skip it. Oh, Adam, you can't cheat that badly. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go, good. Dribble entry, good. Good, look over, look over, look at David's there. Look at the post, stop, stop. Look inside, David. He's right there. Throw it in. Okay, uh, the last, last little bit of screening. This will be in your notes. We've screened away from the ball, now we screen on the ball, and this time we force the defense to play man-to-man -man defense. So you come up and screen here. This is our best shooter now. So he's going to go to the corner. So you dribble, dribble off that, hold up, the pass goes to the corner. Hold up, you roll and post up Will. Yeah. So now we've got man to man on this side of the zone. So now we throw it in, screen the back of the zone. Look, you've got a shot, no, no, yeah, screen him, that's it, just look over. Bang, David, that's you. Good. Okay, let's do that. On ball screen. Screen on the ball. Drift to the corner. Posts. Good. Operate. Good. And also, very good screening from you. And then all you needed to do was open up as the ball was on the way. Open up. David had a shot or we had another one inside. Let's do that again. Screen on the ball. On the ball. <clears throat> Open up, look inside. Good, nice job. Take a seat, fellas. Can we thank the demonstrators?